Okay, I think we are live on Facebook too. So, um, yeah, thank you so much everyone for joining us. So if you're um, joining us on Facebook, uh, this will be the first thing you see. So I just want to introduce myself. I'm Eve, I'm uh, editor of Professional Beauty Magazine. Um, and thanks for joining our, our webinar content series today. Um, today I've got with me Kirsty Kianfard, who is the owner of um, Uniquely Organic Eco Spa and is also a wellness business growth coach. And today, Kirsty is going to be talking about bridging the gap to reopening. So how to maximise on the online learnings that we've all uh, been learning during lockdown to create a stronger salon or spa business. So hi, Kirsty. Hello, Eve. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really looking forward to talking about this topic today. Yeah, we're really looking forward to having you. So I know you've got a PowerPoint presentation, so I will let you kick off in a sec just to let everyone know who is watching. If you're watching via Zoom, um, if you have any questions at all for Kirsty, do just type them into the Q&A box um, and we will get them answered um, at the end. We'll have some time at the end of the session for, um, for a bit of a Q&A. If you've got any other questions, um, sort of general chat, then type it into the chat box. But if it's specific questions for Kirsty, then pop it into the Q&A box, which you should be able to see in your browser screen. Um, if you're watching over on Facebook, then just type any questions that you have as we go along in the comment section on the video. So I will hand over now to you, Kirsty, to get started. Thank you very much. Right, let's just get this presentation up for you all and we will get cracking. So as I had already said um, to those of you that are watching on Zoom, but I'll just reiterate this um, for those of you that are watching on Facebook. So this is um, really um, a presentation all about how do we bridge the gap to reopening? So how do we maximize the online learnings of lockdown to create a stronger business going forward? Now, I think this is really timely and it's really important that we talk about this right now because there is this um, potential that we may be able to start some sort of phased reopening from potentially July, albeit without too much guidance as yet. So I really wanna make this presentation all about how you do that and how you do that with the greatest impact. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can make the ultimate shift from struggling to create impact, feeling stretched too thin and feeling uncertain of what you should be doing during lockdown to creating and marketing a profitable wellness business that is leading with innovation and blazing a trail in your niche as we begin this phased return. So as Eve said, do stay with me until the end because we will have some Q and A's. Now um, I teach on this topic every single day. Um, and one thing I absolutely know to be true is that when uh, we talk about this, everyone has questions, how do I apply this to me and my business? So I would love to be able to answer those questions at the end. So before I go into the goods, I just want to give you a little bit of background on me and what positions me in the place um, to speak on this. So um, as I mentioned earlier, I am a spa owner over there in the top corner. That's my spa there, Uniquely Organic Eco Spa. And that will be celebrating its 10th birthday in July. So um, before that, I was a solo therapist. I rented rooms. Um, I always tell the story of carrying my hot stone heater with all those ridiculously hot stones everywhere with me on the bus. And a lot of times having clients not show or yeah. So I've seen it, I've been there, I've done it all. Um, so it, 10 years ago, I created Uniquely Organic Eco Spa, which is in Brighton and Hove. It's an organic spa, so everything we use in there down to the down to the paints on the walls is ethical and organic. And we really specialize in sort of holistic therapies and we also do a lot of energy work. So after a few years um, there, I evolved and grew my own treatment system called Chakra Sanct. This becomes a little bit more relevant as we move into today's presentation. And that treatment system, um, there are seven treatments within that. We have a product range and lots of lovely stuff around it. Now, about 12 months ago, I launched um, an online course, which you can see there, called the Wellness Entrepreneur Academy. And this is an online course to help wellness entrepreneurs start and scale their business. 
Now the transition is really important that you notice what I've done here as we talk about it going through. Um, and the reason, one of the big reasons that I moved online with my business, I still have the spa, so I run this alongside, was because um, I have three children. I became a mum to twins. And then um, my little boy also got diagnosed with autism about 18 months ago. So the way that I was practicing, the way that I was treating became really difficult. And so I needed to leverage my skills. So can you imagine what it would feel like to look back at this time and realize that it really was the pivotal moment in your career when you decided to only say yes to the projects that light you up? You are the creator of your own destiny. Becoming the owner of a profitable and sustainable wellness business post lockdown means you haven't just survived, but you have proved to yourself and your industry that you see and treat your business as a vehicle to create great impact in the world and great freedom in your life. So that sounds great, but I feel that before we can go there and how we create this incredible vision, we need to just take a little step down memory lane just to a few months ago. So let's explore where we have been pre-lockdown. So the majority of our services were being delivered in person and they were requiring therapists or a therapist to work one-to-one -one in person with that specific client in order to get the desired result. And then the virus struck and all wellness businesses that operated in that way were totally shut down. It was massive. I remember, and you can go and find it on Uniquely Organic Eco Spa's Facebook page. I remember doing a live stream and there were tears when I had to close the doors. I never thought it would have to happen. But the thing that happened immediately and became immediately aware to me, uh, was aware to me was that our clients needed us more than ever. So I work with hundreds of people in our space and we have always known that spas, salons, clinics, mobile therapists and everyone else that works in this industry, we offer way more than simply beautiful nails, smooth skin or relaxed shoulders. Coming for a treatment is a lifeline for many and the only time they are able to support their own well-being. So when the salons closed during a time of collective stress, major anxiety and huge global overwhelm, many clients lost a vital source of support. Now, some businesses recognize this and they made a pivot. Now, in my own, in the, in the academy and in my own communities, I saw some incredible pivots like overnight. So we saw things like online tutorials being born. There was definitely an e increase in e-commerce. I know we did that. Home product deliveries, we for sure did that. It was really nice. I got to go and see, go into my local community, see where my clients lived. Lots of DIY kits. So we had sort of gel kits going out. People had facial kits going out. Lots of really good innovative ideas. Obviously we maximized on social media and a few online courses were started to be born. But many were unable to do this and so they lay in wait. And this is really where we are right now. So what happens next? We are all asking the same questions. I'm being asked this on a daily basis. How many clients do you think you'll be able to serve a day? Will the treatments be the same with PPE and what PPE will be required? How many staff can we have in at once with social distancing? And how are we going to decide how many we have and who we have in? Will the demand still be the same across all offerings? Will people want to come back? Um, will they want to come back for some treatments more than others? If your particular niche is massage, is that gonna be popular? Is it more things that nails are gonna be more popular? And how are our clients gonna feel about coming back? How is the confidence in them in returning to the spa and salon environment? And also one I should have added here is how do our staff feel? How confident do they feel about returning to work? So there is just no denying it. Things are genuinely unlikely to ever be as they once were. Our businesses have totally changed. Our clients have changed. The world has changed. 
But innovation is the ability to see change as an opportunity and not a threat. There is so much that's being born at this time and so many opportunities for us, not only to change our own businesses, but the entire face of this industry. So we need to look at how do we bridge the gap. In order to come back thriving rather than simply surviving, we must bridge the gap between what made our businesses great before lockdown and how we can amplify those skills to create service and offers that transcend the in-person service model. So imagine leveraging your skills to create multiple streams of revenue that allow you to support clients in person and online while simultaneously widening your client reach and being able to support clients across the country, if not across the globe. So from this perspective, it's really important we look at what lockdown has shown us. And the first thing it's shown us, and this is something that was always there, is that that one-to-one -one in person service model was always broken. So lockdown didn't break that model. It was always something that had big limitations. It was always something that I know as a salon owner, we would struggle with. If a therapist was off sick or when I was a practicing therapist, if I was off sick, what would happen if I couldn't be face-to-face -face with my clients? It also taught us that therapist skills are transferable. So as I've said, I've been in this space for a while. Online business is my thing, I love it. And I love bridging this gap between online and in person. Now, the question I used to get asked all the time was, but I'm just this, I'm just that. And we're really talking ourselves down in terms of what transferable skills do I have? How can I leverage what I do in the treatment room and create something outside of it? But what's been shown to us in the innovation that's been created during lockdown is how people think on their feet. When there is that additional pressure, when people are in survival mode, I need to continue to make money. I've seen some incredible ways in which therapists have used transferable skills, have taken what they know, what they're really good at and packaged it in a totally new way. We've also realized how transformational this work is. So as I suggested earlier, we've now seen, we always knew it, but maybe sometimes when we were having busy days when we were seeing lots of clients in a week, we were forgetting how fundamental this work is in the plight to support people's wellness, people's health. You know, the salon, the spa, the clinic, even if you work just from one single treatment room, it's really a sanctuary for our clients. It's somewhere where we can go. So for me, it's plugged me into my mission even more to help share these tools. Because when we see overwhelm, when we see stress rising, we know that we have a wide range of solutions. Now, this is the really exciting one. We have seen that clients are willing to go online. Now, one of the big areas of resistance before lockdown were that clients didn't see the link. And so there was an educational piece around having to teach people how an online offering could support their in-person offering or in-person service. But what's happened is, again, because all of those support systems were removed from clients, people have learned Zoom, like I've been using Zoom for years, but so many people have started to adopt new ways of doing it. And because there was no, uh, no other choice, people moved on it much quicker and they've become to really become familiar, but also to enjoy it in some aspects. So um, I like to think my mum, she's in her 70s and her friends have all been doing their Pilates classes or their yoga classes online. Now, had that teacher suggested it before lockdown, the amount of resistance would likely have been huge. But I'm sure that once things start to resume, people will, will like to feel that they can keep some of the um, advantages of the online offerings. And then finally, what's become acutely aware is that we need leverage. We need to be able to share our gifts and skills in more ways than just one. 
I always talk about the idea that you have, like the gifts and skills you have are so unique to you. Sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we need some, so, some support in how we can leverage those. But leverage is crucial. And we've been shown this here because if the one-to-one -one in person service model was all we had available, the only way we could share our skills, we felt really limited. So I believe that we are in a time of a totally new paradigm shift. And I think in the wellness space, in the beauty world, in the holistic world, it's really an exciting time. In many ways, the industry has been quite slow in moving forward in adapting online offerings um, compared to other industries. So with the old paradigm, we've got fixed industry rate rates, we've got unpredictable income, and we've got an exchange for time and money. And all of us can see the limitations there. All of us can see the reasons why that can cause us to feel, even before lockdown, that things weren't always that easy. But the paradigm shift in adopting this new way of working means that we start to be able to price the transformation. We leverage your skills, we leverage what you're good at, we look at ways that we can package that, and we really start to look at the change we're making in the world. We can create some long-term consistent cash flow. So I'll be sharing some models with you in a moment. But you'll be able to see how you can start to predict income a lot better. And then my favorite, we're exchanging income for impact. So I'm all about working with people that are driven by impact. And I believe that most people in this space come into it as a result of some of their own personal transformations. And so we often lead with impact when we step into this work. So the future really depends on what you do today. I did a Facebook Live yesterday over on my business page and I was saying that the most common phrase I'm hearing right now is let's wait and see. So people are saying, we're not sure what's gonna go on, so let's wait and see. But honestly, don't wait and see. Make a move now. Start thinking about how you can leverage your skills and build new online revenue streams right now. I've also heard some people say, I didn't get on it quick enough. You know, lockdown was really overwhelming. Things change so quickly. And if you're like me and you had a family at home, it can be very difficult to get into that creative space. But it's not too late. If you didn't pivot totally during lockdown, it's not too late for you to start thinking of ways that as we move back into our new normal, you've been able to leverage your skills. Now, the next really important thing to be doing is to build the transition into your marketing narrative. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, when I've been watching TV of an evening, you'll notice now that most of the big names are speaking to the problem. They are speaking to lockdown life. They have pivoted their marketing, which they didn't do before. When we first went into lockdown, they were holding back. They were, they were playing the same adverts. But now they understand that we're not going back we're starting to create a new normal. And so they're positioning themselves to bring those clients on that journey with them. So I saw last night, I tried to remember these for you, I saw an Uber advert. So they were talking all about how they've been supporting people, key workers and people in the NHS to help them get to work. And that's now part of their marketing there was uh, Vodafone. Vodafone were talking now and they were positioning their marketing about how important it is to stay connected, how important it is that we speak more on the phone or over video because we're not able to see each other in person. Now, it's really important that you speak to that. So if you're thinking about bringing something new into your business and you're not totally sure how your clients will feel because it's not the same offering as they had before, but you feel it's something that may support them, speak to it. Talk about how they might be feeling right now. Talk about what's happened as a result of losing that in-person contact and talk about what things might look like going forward that maybe they can't get in so easily into your um, spa or salon. Maybe because because you've got to have larger gaps between your um, appointment times. Maybe there can't be so many people in the same space. So really speak to that and take your clients on the journey. So let them know that if they become part of perhaps something that accompanies that in-service offer offering, that it will really enhance their experience and allow you to develop deeper relationships with them. 
So I've put there in brackets reward. So this is just something, a little seed that I'll just leave with you. The idea that when people um, are early adopters, when people see you move and you start to blaze a trail and you start to do something in your space that no one else is doing, while everyone else is waiting and watching and seeing what everyone else does, and you've already started to create some innovation, you've thought of whole new ways of getting those same results into your client's hands. So really reward your clients for being brave enough to come on that journey with you, and they'll get so excited and again, want to share it with their friends. So I thought I would just give you some idea of what this actually looks like in practice. Because as I said at the beginning, I often find people say, that sounds great. And I can imagine how so-and-so could do that. But what about me? So before we go into the questions, let me just give you some real practical examples. So we took a treatment system that we developed in SPA and turned it into a seven week online course. So remember at the beginning, I talked to you about Chakrasanth, which was a treatment system I designed probably about eight years ago. Now, the, the system itself is entirely treatment based. There's no way that we could, we didn't have anything there that we could take. But we created a course out of the philosophy behind the chakras because we already knew it was what our clients were interested in. Now, we launched that in two weeks. We smashed our target. And not only do we have lots of our spa clients that have taken the course, but because it's an online course and it can be open to anyone, we have participants from all over the world. Now, why was this born? This was simply born from one email, which I sent out probably about two days after we closed. And I asked, how can we continue to support you? I recognized the pain, I spoke to it, I told them that this is a difficult situation for everyone and that I knew they needed us now more than ever and that I felt limited by what I was able to offer them. But I gave them some examples of the sorts of things I was thinking of and I got a huge response that people wanted to learn something at home that could help them with their own wellness and well-being. and so we created the course. So an online course is a perfect way to go deeper on a specific topic with your salon clients. So it might be something that you find yourself talking to all the time with your clients when you see them or a particular interest that your clients share. And so you can create an online course around it. Now, another great model is a membership or subscription model. So membership models are a great way to deepen your relationship with your clients and deliver a slice of the salon experience to their home. So these can be used for products or services or a combination of the two, or you can start thinking about creating educational resources to support other people in your field. So in that picture there, you'll see the Wellness Entrepreneur Collective, which we're launching on Monday, and that is a membership program for wellness entrepreneurs to help them start and scale their business. And then educational resources. So this is huge. I've seen this. Um, I wanted to bring it to you, but I'll maybe put it in the comments later on. But there's there's someone in the States who's a, a lash technician. And she's created this same sort of platform, a membership platform, specifically for lash technicians, where they talk about the latest tools, all about how to grow your business. And she's, you know, she's she was someone that practiced that herself and then leveraged her skills and created an educational resource. So maybe take what you are known for in your space and create an online course, a group program, or some sort of virtual offering that supports other people in your niche. Now, the, the craziest thing when I started to create my um, online business when I started to create those services I never realized how much impact it would have on our in-person practice so it not only helps to establish you as an expert in your field but it also will have your in-person offerings in high demand as well because people start to see you as the best in the business at that specific thing and who doesn't want to be treated by the best in the business so it's about being the voice your audience need to hear. We've heard over and over and over again how important leadership is right now. And there will be, and I'm sure you've heard from them, a wealth of clients that you were treating before lockdown 
who almost on a daily basis now are wondering when you are reopening. So be the voice that they need to hear. Step in, have conversations with them, look at ways that you can start supporting them in a totally new and innovative way. And so that they get excited again about what could happen and what they could be part of once we start to come out of lockdown. And remember that impact equals income. So do you remember at the beginning, I talked about the idea of what it would feel like to only do the thing that you absolutely love. I'm a firm believer that we should work within our own zo unique zone of genius. So it's all about finding out what you absolutely love to do and then going all in on that. And then finally, if you feel some resistance there, if you're feeling nervous about stretching out into a whole new realm that you're not sure about yet, I know that was my biggest challenge. I'd been a therapist for over a decade and stepping into the online sp space felt totally overwhelming and I would be like the small fish again. But I really just wanna recognize that when we hold ourselves back, we really hold our clients back. So it's really plugging into that deeper why and finding out what it is we love about doing it anyway and how much we really missed our client contact and how much of a big part we played in their lives. And I know for me, that's been shown during lockdown for sure. So it is all about blazing a trail. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, I would love to answer any questions that you may have. Hi, everyone. Well, thanks so much, Kirsty. That was really, really interesting. I think uh, we all learned a lot there. And um, I just want to say before we move on to the Q&A, and um, you will have seen in the comment box, today's session is sponsored by Timely Appointment Software. Um, and Timely have an offer on at the moment. Consult by Timely is a free iOS app. And it's free for everyone, not just Timely customers. And it allows businesses to design their own forms or use the existing industry templates. So it's really good for businesses that need to collect client information and get waivers and consents. Um, and it's secure and GDPR compliant. So if, you've, um, if you'd like to check that out, we've put a link in the comment box in Zoom and over on Facebook. But fabulous, it's, uh, yeah, it's time if anyone has any questions for Kirsty. If you're watching in Zoom, do pop them in the Q&A box. I can see we've got a couple coming through. Um, and if you're watching over on Facebook, just type them into the comments. So yeah, first question is from Janet. Will you not need a teaching qualification to do this? So I guess this is um, re regarding the online courses you're talking about. Do you have a teaching qualification? Would you recommend that? How does, how does that work? I do. I do have one um, because alongside the spa, we run um, a training centre called Body Mind School. Um, it really depends on what you are doing. So obviously, if you want to accredit people, if you want to teach on a particular skill or technique, um, then yes, um, and it depends. I mean, if you wanted to go into the sort of group coaching sort of arena or the mentoring arena, you might want to look down the route of having a coaching qualification. Um, but yeah, it's sort of, you need to land on the idea, I think, and then understand if you need any additional qualifications there. Excellent, thank you. Can I just ask actually, Kirsty, could you stop sharing your screen so people can see our faces yeah, cool. nice and big for the, <laughs> for the Q and A? Yeah. Fabulous, then people can see us. Um, I know we've had a couple of questions over on Facebook too. Um, Chantel has asked, do we charge for online consultations or do we retail online from a consultation? So yeah, I think online consultations have become quite a popular thing, particularly during lockdown. Um, and I know different salons and therapists have different kind of models. So what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, again, I think it really depends on the outcome. I'm a firm believer of pricing the transformation, as I said. So I think, I feel that in those sort of um, offers, it's great to have like a, a sort of a package price. So it feels like an experience. So people are buying into something which includes the consultation, if you like, and then maybe you get X amount of products included in that. I think follow-ups are really nice. So it doesn't just stop there. So once your client's got the products, maybe if you've been doing consultation, so they can do something at home for themselves and then you follow up a week later, see how that's going on. I think it's all about building these ongoing relationships. So I personally would put the consultation into, um, yeah, into the package price, if you like, of that, of, of the whole thing. Absolutely, no, that makes sense. And um, I was just interested actually to ask a little bit more about the online courses that you do. How do you work that? Because I think that's a really interesting thing that people could do beyond lockdown once they start to reopen and to look at that and um, at that space. So how would you advise them to start putting together a course? How many sessions? 
um, and would you do these live or, or pre-recorded or, or how do you work that? The online course world is, I'm so passionate about it and it's so, um, there's so many ways you can do it. And I think it's important to talk about like the entry level. So lots of people that are listening to this may have taken online courses themselves and it might have been all singing or dancing and that's what can really put people off. So I've had people in my academy who have put together online courses and the whole thing has taken place within a Facebook group. So if you want to do it super simple, you could create a closed Facebook group where everyone that enrolls in the course comes into that group. You could deliver the content live. So um, in my academy, I have eight modules. This is a bit more uh, meaty. We do have a back office and we do have all of that. But you could deliver the modules, say they were coming out each week. You could deliver it live into a Facebook group. Um, Facebook has just started to release Facebook rooms, which works like Zoom. So you can have all your all your clients there if you like um, so you can see each other so you can make it really sociable that was the key thing actually with lockdown as well where online courses stepped into the fore because it helped people to connect with people outside of their their home their family um, so you can do it really simply like that Facebook also allows you to um, upload like pdfs and stuff into the group so you could literally create the whole thing within a group and then you could, if the content's good, you can then always repurpose that. So if you wanted to sell that again, that course again and again, which is the great thing about online courses, you can keep selling them. Um, then you can look at repurposing that content if you wanted to upgrade to, you know, something a little bit more fancy. Fantastic. Thank you. That's really interesting. So um, we've had a couple more questions. So what... Um, when you were talking about educational resources, um, do you are you recommending that for clients or for others in the industry? And sort of how would you? You could do either. So um, you know, I think so. For example, in the holistic space, when you're doing body work with people, when you're doing massage, when you're even facials and things like that, a lot of people come because they're stressed. Life is hard, and if I know anything about spending time with therapists, they have a wealth of knowledge outside of, you know, how to conduct a massage as to how to support people's health and well-being. So I've seen people create short courses or educational resources where there's some place they can go and log in and then they can access like a library of meditations of um, additional like health resources, nutritional plans. I work with a nutritionist and she does that sort of stuff. Um, so there's that, but then yeah, there's a whole other thing. If you're really good at what you do professionally, if you are, you know, if you've created a, a really successful business, if you're teaching on, if you're doing something that other people keep asking you, how are you doing it? Then you can step into that sort of more mentorship position and start looking at those educational resources that way. Fantastic. Thanks. And um, another question has just popped up in the chat box here. Um, Kirsty, we've been doing many Instagram Q and A's for the beauty industry, and I've had both clients and therapists on the chat. Would you do a separate one for clients and a separate one for therapists? Sometimes it's been tricky with clients joining. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think so. I think um, just to get the power of the message, because I think the voice that you use for um, you know, the, the language and the, the narrative of the therapist is very different to the narrative of the client. So yeah, I would do them separately. Absolutely. And I think also, you know, you have certain trade secrets and, you know, trade yeah. prices and things like that that need to be kind of kept within the professional sphere, I suppose. Totally agree, yeah. Fabulous. Um, excellent. So I think, yeah, we've just had lots of comments popping up saying, great, thank you. Oh, amazing. <laughs> really useful, great advice. So yeah, great advice, online offerings will be able to reach our clients. So I think that's it. I mean, as you said earlier, I think it's um, it's quite a leap for most people in the in the therapist industry. I mean, it's it's been quite a leap for us as we were just chatting about before we went live today that, you know, doing daily webinars is even quite far removed for us from doing written content and online content. So it is, a, it is a leap, but once you get used to it, it is so rewarding, I think, because you get so much engagement and you get so much feedback. So I think- I think it's just really important for people to keep an eye on like the next five years. I think we're all looking at the next five months and I get that. I mean, I am too with the spa coming back, but I think it's really important to think this will change the industry it, it yeah. will it will change everything all industries and so um if you can get in now in with that sort of looking at new ways of doing things we all make mistakes you know you'll try it it might not go so well tech issues all of that but um but then thinking about the five year sort of marker thinking where you could be having both things up and running i think it's really exciting for this industry definitely i think we've just had another comment over on facebook saying yes there 
practice and naturally wellness coaches so knowledgeable and should definitely tap into this potential as an additional income stream. So I think everyone that everyone agrees. I think it's just like making that leap, taking taking the time and getting started, because um, as you say, I think people's mindsets have changed. And now's probably the best time to, to jump on that, maximise on that and keep it going once you're once you're back up and running. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got a podcast, the Wellness Entrepreneur podcast, and it has loads of like walkthroughs of all the tech stuff because I'm a massive tech geek um, and I know how difficult it is. So things, you know, all the sort of nuts and bolts that you might need to start creating a bit of an online business. It's all over there if anyone wants to go and check it out. Excellent. That's really useful because I think that that's also the challenge, isn't it? Sometimes that people sort of think, well, the, you know, where do you get started? It's the tech side that's overwhelming. They've got the knowledge, they've got the information, but it's just that fear of kind of getting the technological side started so yeah that's great to have some help and advice on that and um, thank you so much for joining us today Kirsty and thank you also to our sponsor Timely which is our sponsor for the, the full week of webinars this week so um, if you want to register for any more do check them out on professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars but for now thank you so much Kirsty Kenford it's been really really useful and really interesting in play today thank you really nice to speak to you all have a great day too and thanks everyone for joining bye bye